Hi, I'm Ryan Morrow, Shulman Fellow for the Clarion Project, and today we have to talk about the terrorist attack on two mosques in New Zealand. We cannot dismiss this terrorist attack as the work of a lone wolf or the type of racist psychopath who inevitably exists in any large population as if it's a fact of life. His actions and the extremist ideology expressed in his manifesto are not the ravings of an individual madman. His actions reflect the beliefs of a growing white supremacist neo-Nazi movement that believes that they can use our toxic political culture to trigger a revolution in the West. And in the case of this New Zealand terrorist, he wanted to rip America to pieces that way. The movement is part of what I have been calling the War of the Extremes, where Islamist extremists, right-wing extremists, left-wing extremists all believe that they face genocide, therefore want to extinguish each other, and they all end up fueling each other. Now, although Clarion Project focuses on Islamic extremism, we do provide intelligence to the authorities on non-Islamic extremism, particularly those that wish to target Muslims. As the director of Clarion's intelligence network, I've seen all of these dangerous ideologies rise together in recent years, and they believe that they can make America implode. ISIS explicitly said they had a strategy of provoking an anti-Muslim backlash. Every terrorist attack against Muslims like what you saw happen in New Zealand and in other places vindicates the Islamist ideology that says that the non-Muslim world is waging a war on Islam and that Muslims cannot live safely in a democracy. For ISIS, anti-Muslim terrorism is the proof that they are right that Muslims must wage jihad and must embrace Sharia theocracy. And as Islamic extremism grows, anti-Muslim extremism grows and white supremacy also grows. And both sides want this conflict to escalate. That's the sound of the explosion that rocked Manchester, England tonight. This is the incident uh, close to Finsbury Park Mosque in the early hours of Monday morning. 2015 attacks in Paris. As many as 600 French nationals rallied to the call of the sun. Rang out during the sacred evening prayers at the Quebec Islamic Cultural Center with 50 worshippers inside. Oh God. According to this academic, operations conducted by the jihadists in France are motivated by hatred and accuse France of being a country that spreads a form of Islamophobia. Charges will be filed against an alleged white supremacist accused of stabbing two good Samaritans to death on a commuter train. Or they want to go in for some hateful reason, whatever that hateful ideology is, kill as many people as possible. As white supremacism grows, Left-wing extremists like Antifa accuse conservatives who have nothing to do with white supremacism of being fascists, racists, and Islamophobes who must be silenced for the good of the country. And then some of those left-wing extremists turn to violence. Hutchinson targeting Republican members of Congress and as a result of left-wing extremists treating conservatives as an enemy undeserving of free speech, that results in right-wing extremists who believe that they are forced to fight their oppressors. Are, are hostile to people who are in the Obama administration, hostile to CNN, uh, hostile to George Soros and, and others. ...be detained pending trial. The FBI raided his cramped Silver Spring, Maryland apartment where they found a cache of guns and evidence that... Updating our top story now, a gunman shot Arizona Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords and several others today at an outdoor event in Tucson, Arizona. Fundamentally, this war of the extremes is created by the death of nuance. We've reached a point where each side views the other as evil and as posing such a threat that violence is viewed as a justifiable and necessary response for survival. And all these ideologies view our democracy as having failed, and they see peaceful, non-bigoted Americans as weak panderers. All of these adversaries have identified our toxic political culture and our demonizing of each other as our weak point. ISIS believes that our democracies cannot survive a series of terrorist attacks and that will respond by abusing Muslims, thereby helping jihadists to recruit. 
The New Zealand terrorists believed our politics are so full of hatred that he could spark a civil war, ripping America into pieces along political and racial lines. Right-wing extremists constantly talk about sparking a violent revolution against our government and a new world order conspiracy and attacking those that they hate. Left-wing extremists believe that they can make conservatives lose free speech with just a little bit of intimidation and slander, paving the way for their own revolution. Our intelligence community says that Russia, and presumably others, are ideologically attacking us by using fake news and bots to inflame tensions, pitting us against each other, hoping for our country to become dysfunctional and to implode, finally defeating the free world as the Soviet Union was unable to. The Founding Fathers saw this threat right from the start. In George Washington's farewell address, he issued a final warning to Americans that, quote, the baneful effects of the spirit of party were what he called America's worst enemy. He said America's public opinion must discourage and restrain the spirit of party because it, quote, kindles the animosity of one part against another. And the result, he said, would be division, insurrection, and if we fail to stop it, a flame that consumes the nation. This war of the extremes must be treated as a threat to the survival of the free world, just like Washington warned. My name is Ryan Morrow. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for future videos.